today we're talking about Brexit. Because Britain is just really bad at leaving things. Just ask India, America, and almost any other country that celebrates an independence day. Now, some of you might be thinking, Stephen, really? We're talking about Brexit? That referendum happened before the 2016 election. Surely it's been resolved maybe a year ago. At least they're close to being done, right? Well, I would say that Britain is back to where they've started, except it might be even worse than that. So what's going on? Well, listen to the British Parliament react to Theresa May's recent updates on the process. Mr. Speaker, what we agreed yesterday was not the final deal. It is a draft treaty. It is a draft treaty that means that we will leave the EU in a smooth and orderly way on the 29th of March 2019. Hope oh, that's not the funniest joke of the episode. Honestly, this last week has been a whirlwind of chaos regarding this referendum. Here's the first piece of news that has people saying, well, that's not a good sign. On Thursday, November 15th, also known as the day I'm writing this episode, two cabinet ministers quit Theresa May's government, one of which was Dominic Robb, her chief negotiator on withdrawal from the European Union. Ironically enough, his retirement was probably the closest he'll ever come to negotiating an exit from government. Let's circle back to this proposal though, because it had trouble passing her cabinet vote. Not a parliamentary vote, a cabinet vote. Which to translate to American politics, would be like if Donald Trump was having trouble getting support for an idea from... Deeply honored and I want to thank you for keeping your commitment to the American workers. My hat's off to you for taking that stand and for sending a clear message around the world. It's a privilege to serve. I can't thank you enough for the the privilege that you've given me and the leadership that you've shown. In fact, because her own cabinet is split down the middle, some are saying Rob's departure was not only unexpected, but also deeply damaging to Miss May's authority, increasing the risk that she might face a leadership challenge from rebel lawmakers inside her own conservative party. So much for United Kingdom. Before we even go to the larger consequences of this, what is going on in the British Conservative Party? There's a strong difference of opinion between a soft Brexit and a hard Brexit, which is the difference between we can still be friends and I set all your clothes on fire in the backyard, don't ever talk to me again. Well, it's not quite that extreme, but the question is whether to continue to abide by European Union regulations, which would make everything so much easier, especially for Ireland, which if we're going to talk about Brexit proposals, we kinda have to mention Ireland, because it was a pretty significant part of the most recent proposal. The text runs for hundreds of pages, detailing technical details of their divorce, including on the most contentious issue of the Irish border. Britain, this is why you don't colonize your next door neighbors. It's like dating a coworker. If you don't end up forming a union, things get awkward. In this case, I'm gonna need a map, because Ireland is in Ireland. I know I just blew a stoner's mind somewhere. In fact, you have the Republic of Ireland, which is remaining as a part of the European Union, and Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. Get those two wrong and you'll quickly learn that an Irish car bomb isn't just a drink. The problem here is, if Britain doesn't standardize European Union regulations, not only will people trying to export things suffer, because differing regulation standards and all the fun paperwork associated with that, but also because all of a sudden this border between the two Irelands is going to become, well, a border. Sure, less of a US-Mexico situation and more of a US-Canada situation, but that's still a pain with quite a bit of manpower required. Can't have all of those people smuggling over the border EU approved toys that haven't yet passed British tests. On the other hand, you have people like this cabinet member and the most British man who's ever Britished saying, well, She hasn't so much struck a deal as surrendered to Brussels and given in to them on everything that they want uh, and tried to frustrate Brexit, that it is not so much the vassal state anymore as the slave state. Okay, I'm sorry, you can't talk, look, and dress like that while complaining about Great Britain becoming a slave state. I wish I could hear that opinion from someone a little less Monica-esque. It is a constitutional outrage. It's not taking back control, it's forfeiting control. And by the way, 
they know it in Brussels. There we go. I mean, that's very true. If you give the European Union control of your country's import standards, then why leave it all? I mean, Britain already had their own currency and wasn't participating in the somewhat open border Schengen agreement of the EU. Britain was essentially the boyfriend who kept their Tinder account in case something better came along. Hey, if this discussion was easy, it wouldn't have taken two years to come up with a proposal. Theresa May's proposal solves this argument the best way politicians know how. Deferring it. Under the draft agreement, the UK will stay inside the bloc's single market and remain subject to EU laws and regulations until the end of December 2020, while the two sides attempt to iron out a new trade relationship. Well, it took two years, but we finally figured it out. We need two more years. The next step of this proposed agreement is to go to the British Parliament. You remember these guys. Because what we agreed yesterday was not the final deal. It is a draft treaty. <laughs> the question here is, how will the Parliament vote? And that includes their own party, of which pro-Brexit members are pushing for a vote of no confidence. Which would essentially trigger a party snap election where anyone could run and win control of the government. Except for Theresa May. And that vote is entirely because of Brexit. So already, pretty encouraging stuff. The question now is, how will Parliament vote? Let's assume for a moment that Theresa May does manage to hold on as uh, Prime Minister. Uh, she then needs to get this draft agreement through Parliament. What are the numbers involved in that? It's not yes, too easy, is it? this is the famous meaningful vote. And on the face of it, she really does have an uphill struggle. Now I know why House of Guards started out as a British TV show. Because forget White House drama, I feel like I need a popcorn tin just to get through a BBC report. So will it pass? The calculations are that the Prime Minister would need 320 to get over the line. Is she going to get that? Her government, of course, as we can see from the chart in Parliament, is in a very pre precarious position. It only governs thanks to the support of the uh, Democratic Unionists in Northern Ireland, the DUP. Okay, so 320 votes. Well, if everybody in her party votes for it and five Irish representatives vote for it, she's good. But the Irish don't like it because it might lead to their country being split in two for bureaucratic purposes in a matter of years, which generally isn't popular amongst Irish people. Unfortunately also, the other parties are either abstaining from voting or vehemently against the deal. So why try to cram something through right now? Well, an agreement is needed by March 29th or else the hardest of hard Brexits will happen and everything just shuts down between Europe and Britain. Business groups have warned that if there's no deal by next month, companies will have to enact contingency plans that could include cutting jobs, stockpiling goods, and relocating production overseas. So I guess she's helped by the fact that if nobody can agree, everything's going to hell. Although, if that's the positive in this situation, you're going to need a new motivational speaker. The light at the end of the tunnel is an oncoming train. This is an island nation, reliance on the flow of trade in and out of the country. So even if we continue to get our flowers tariff-free from Holland, there's no guarantee that customs officials on the other side of the channel will do likewise for our goods and our services. And that ultimately is the crux of the matter. Theoretically, life could just carry on as it has done in the past, but there's no domestic legal obligation for it to do so if we leave the EU without any kind of a deal. If there are no trade agreements, well, then other countries can do whatever they want with trade to Britain, which in this trade climate could be a lot of different things. Because Britain, don't be expecting a basket from your new neighbors. Alright, so let's just say this passes Parliament, which because of the gun to government officials' heads is being predicted to happen. What next? Well, I've heard most deals require two parties to agree, and I haven't even mentioned the EU yet. According to European Commission Press Release Database, a website as interesting as it sounds, on the 14th of November 2018, the European Commission and UK negotiators reached an agreement on the entirety of the withdrawal agreement and on an outline of the political declaration of the future of EU-UK relationships. Britain is one step closer to making Brexit a reality, striking a draft deal with Brussels over the terms of its departure from the European Union. They agree, a glimmer of hope. 
The problem is, that's it! We agreed to your 585 page trade document, now please let us go. EU leaders have dismissed talk of renegotiating the draft Brexit deal and warned the UK's political situation could make a no deal more likely. At this point, all eyes are on Britain's parliament. Whether they choose to pass the deal or not could lead to a messy hard Brexit or a nice soft Brexit. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent non-partisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head, or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.